Let's talk about the calendar now. As you can see, Routine uh, uh, features all of the events from all of your calendars, but even more from all of your accounts because you can go to settings and you can connect multiple accounts. Google for now, but later Outlook and then after that iCloud calendar. That is great because it allows you to really unify all of your time management under a single app. Now, underneath, you can see underneath each day, you have the tasks that have been scheduled for that day. Great for having an overview of everything that you will need to do every day. But if you don't want to see it, you can always hide it or you can use keyboard shortcuts, sorry, if you want to hide or not uh, that section. Now, on the left-hand side, that's really the interesting part. Those are the tasks of the week. Remember when we postponed the task called accountants, when you did this and create and postpone, this is where the task lands. So those are the tasks that you want to complete by the end of the week. You just haven't decided exactly when. And so some people use this as a backlog, meaning that when they have a bit of time to work on something, they're going to pick a task, basically work on it and mark it as completed when they're done. Other people prefer to plan ahead. And so it could be on Sunday to prepare the week to come. It could be first thing on Monday. Uh, it doesn't really matter. What's important is that it could go something like this. Some tasks you could decide to schedule for a specific day. You could drag it, drop it in a section underneath, or you could use the schedule button. And you could say, I want to work on this next Monday. Other tasks you could say, uh, that you actually won't have time to work on them. Maybe clean windows is not something that you will have time to do this week. So you could postpone it, let's say, to in two weeks. So September 25 to uh, October 1st. So I mean, basically you push the task to later and you will re-evaluate, reassess the task when that time comes. And other tasks you might think that you really, really need to dedicate the time. Maybe this task here, you could drag it, drop it in your calendar and say, I need two hours to actually work on that task. Now, just know that when you block time, when you allocate time through this drag and drop uh, uh, mechanism, an event is actually created in your calendar. So in Google Calendar in that instance. Now, this event is marked as busy so that your colleagues know that you are not available for an event, like a meeting. But it is also marked as private. This way, your colleagues will not see written prepare presentation. What they will see is just written busy. This way, you can block time for personal matters. Nobody will know. Okay? Now, because it's a calendar, obviously, you can change weeks. If you go two weeks in the future, you will see the clean windows task. So basically, those tasks of the week are hidden until this becomes the current week. Now, two things to remember which are really, really important. By the end of the week, if you haven't completed the task here, the task of the week, there is a single one for now, it will automatically be moved to the next week. So this task will be moved with those tasks which are reserved for next week. So nothing is lost, nothing is forgotten. That is quite logical. However, the task of the day, so those tasks here, which you can see also through the dashboard, the four tasks, or in the agenda. Those four tasks, if you fail to complete them by the end of the day, they will not be moved to tomorrow. That is something that all task management tools do. We decided not to do it. The reason why we decided to do that is because we've seen time and time and time again what it leads to. And it's always the same thing. Tasks start piling up in your today screen up until the point where it doesn't mean anything anymore. It's become a big mess of stuff to do soon-ish. And so it doesn't really help you to really focus on what you really need to accomplish today. And you, the research has shown that it's better to have a few things that you really need to accomplish rather than a long list of things that you know you will just never get done. So that's why if you fail to complete some of those tasks by the end of the day, we don't put them to tomorrow because that creates stress uh, and that's not necessary. What we do instead is that we put them back in the list of tasks of the week. 
because you fail to accomplish them, we still assume that you need to accomplish them during the week. But it is for you to take a conscious decision about when to do it. So maybe you just forgot to tick it. You just need to do it. Maybe you need to actually really dedicate the time. So you need to block time in your calendar. Or maybe the task uh, has, is just has become irrelevant or the priorities have, shift, have shifted and you just need to postpone the task or to delegate it to someone else. In any case, it is for you to take that decision. It is not for us. Okay, so at first it will be a bit surprising, but I can assure you the feedback we got from our users is always the same. It is mind-blowingly effective. Because when you start today, you have only the task and the event that you had decided, nothing more. And if you are a bit light on the task side, you can always go to your task of the week and pick a few more. Okay, that's basically it for the calendar.